Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to review a product. And as you can see, the product sits right here. It is called EM Scope from a Spanish manufacturer called EMSA, right? And I met um, their salespeople at the EMC and Compliance International Conference this year that we were organizing in the UK. And they were kind enough to uh, uh, basically lend me this uh, module to give a try and send my feedback basically, right? So uh, let's have a look at this uh, equipment, okay? So this shows you the front panel of this uh, equipment, right? So it is not a lizard, right? It is actually a combination of lizard analyzer and uh, also featuring the common mode and DM separation modules inside, okay? And uh, my colleague Ken Wyatt has written an article detailing his review, right? And you can find uh, the article in the link I put on the show notes. Um, but uh, yeah, today we're going to have a, have a try ourselves, okay? So this is the front panel. And as you can see, I just opened the box and it comes with some uh, uh, link, right? The coaxial link and uh, also uh, optical coupler to the USB. And things like that okay and um, let's just have a look at the front panel so here you got RF input and RF output okay so because we mentioned there's a listen inside so normally if you're using this for um, for your uh, conducting emission tests for home appliance uh, application then you simply uh, link these two using the uh, uh, the links uh, coaxial cable they provide however this i believe they also have the version that you can extend the frequency band up to 110 megahertz that means this can also be used for military defense or automotive application so in that case you have to have your own dc listen set up right and then in that case then rf inputs can be connected to the your your own listen setup okay so that's why you got these uh, RF inputs here, okay? And of course, the standard uh, uh, DUT connection here, earthing connection here, and earthing connection here. Also here, you can see the artificial hand. This is for products such as a hand tool, right? That is mains powered, where, you know, in a, in a typical use uh, scenario, you would hold the hand uh, tool, for example, and the EMC test basically try to simulate that kind of scenario. Hence, there's a artificial hand connection. And normally you connect the cable to the artificial hand and you have a tin foil wrapped around your product for such tests. Okay, so that's really is just the, the front panel review. I have to say that this product actually is pretty uh, big. Okay, so you see that this is my table and you can see that how it sits on, the, on, on my wood table. And it's also quite heavy, of course, because there's listen inside, okay? But the build quality, I have to say, is really, really good. I mean, this is just uh, uh, either aluminium plate or, um, or a uh, steel case, right? And you can see the paint is pretty good quality. And I'll just show you the back of the module. Okay, so the back of the module looks like this. Again, pretty beautiful design in a sense, right? White design with all these uh, uh, designs. So yeah, I guess because perhaps uh, they are Spanish companies, they, they, they know their design a lot better than uh, other companies. Yeah, but so this is really good. Um, here you can connect the optical connection and uh, that's the main input to the analyzer and this, this will be connected to your uh, isolation transformer and again safety is always the most important thing so here you can see the safety warning lights right saying you have to connect this to the safety earth before any test okay okay so now we set the listen so you can see the listen now sits on the test ground plane it's grounded um, uh, to the test ground plane this is the uh, uh, opt fiber link that this will then uh, convert to USB to my laptop. Here is the power to the analyzer, okay? And here really is the power to the listen, okay? So, so here on the front panel, you can see I link these two as we explained before, and uh, here shows you some um, indication lights, and this will be then connected to our DUT, 
Okay. So the device on the test, again, is a uh, AC to DC converter, and this converter uses GAN device. So you can see on the back of the converter, there are two switches here, which are gallium nitride devices. So these are the new wideband gap devices that can give you a fast switching actions on a, on a power converter, therefore make the converter extremely uh, high efficient. And again, we're using a load from TechBox. So this is a, a quiet load option here. Okay, so that's it. So we are going to have a look at the performance of this uh, analyzer. For this analyzer, you don't need to install a software on your PC. Instead, you type in on your web browser, emscope- and then follow the, uh, the four digit serial number of this uh, scope. And then this brings you to the uh, web page software. Okay, so this is a cool idea in my opinion, right? And uh, as you can see, very similar to the, uh, the user interface as most of the uh, spectral analyzers uh, available in the market. Okay, so here you can define a sweet frequency band. Okay, uh, depends on your application. And uh, you can define am amplitude. So you've got a reference level. You can increase the reference level, for example. Um, to let's put it on 115 then. Um, uh, here you can select the, the scale, the division, input uh, attenuator currently is set as automatic. Okay, let's leave it as automatic. And uh, yeah, so that's on amplitude. Trace configuration, that's the most important part because you can do clear write, maximum hold, freeze, or minimum hold. So yeah, I guess that's pretty standard. Uh, you can do EMI measurement on both lines, so live line or neutral line, just simply by click the button. And you can also do uh, uh, CM and DM separation, common mode and differential mode uh, separation. You could also select detector type, peak, quasi-peak or average. Okay, so in this case, let's select quasi-peak. Okay. Limits wise, as you can see, we loaded CISPR 32 class B limit. And here you have a few selections that you can choose. Uh, if there's any feedback, I think they need to uh, put more available standards limits here. But of course, you can always uh, edit and create a limit line by yourself, right? Then reports, you can do reports and things like that. Okay, so yeah, pretty, pretty. Uh, standard so go to trace configuration i think one thing i figured out is that for example now currently trace one we set as measure live quasi peak clear right okay and uh, you can add more okay so click trace two then you can perhaps do a uh, module measurement and measure dm okay and then click trace three then you also want to look at the common mode so here we have three traces showing in one graph, okay? And uh, uh, you can see that currently it's just measuring the ambient, right? And once we power the unit up, we should be able to see the quasi-peak results, scanning results of um, conduct of this unit, right? And then uh, I can, I should also be able to see the differential mode and common mode separation. So that's uh, one of the uh, unique setting points of this uh, analyzer, okay? So go to amplitudes, let's just see. Okay, so they have the input attenuator currently set as uh, automatic. Let's find out if they have a uh, pre-amplifier here. Doesn't look like there is a pre-amplifier option. So I wonder if I really want to lower the noise floor what option do I have? Well, I guess if they don't put in here, perhaps it's not available, at least for this version. Okay, so we just leave as it is, because it's a mains powered product. We don't really, for, for this application, for this demo, you will see you actually don't really need a, a, a very low noise floor. Okay, so without further ado, let me power the unit up, okay? So now we power the unit up. Now you immediately see, um, the noise picked up, right? So currently you can see blue trace is uh, what we measure the differential mode noise and the green shows you the common mode. But what happens to the red then? Let's go to red. Red is supposed to show live to ground, quasi peak, clear, right? Okay, so let's figure out what's, what's the issue there. So go to trace configuration, let's clear right. Perhaps you need some time. 
Uh, I know it's because I select this. Okay, so now we have three results here. Okay, so another feature here you can see that I can uh, hide these two by right? only showing this one. So this is really the uh, overall conducting emission results measured by the uh, analyzer. I can freeze it, I guess. So now it's frozen. Okay, it's frozen. So you can see definitely quasi-peak results exceeding the quasi-peak limit line in this case by a few dB, actually pretty bad. And uh, interesting, interesting, right? So if I put in here and I show you the differential mode noise, interesting that differential mode noise, I freeze it, is, uh, is this level, whereas the common mode noise, right? So let me just get rid of the differential mode so you can have a better look. So you can see, and pretty much according to this uh, scanning results, pretty much all the noise, are, well, the noise is dominated by common modes by common modes from the very low frequency, from the very low frequency. This is actually quite contrary to what most people think that, you know, for a typical switch mode power supply, you have differential mode noise dominant in the lower frequency range, sort of like below five megahertz, and then above five megahertz, you have more common mode noise. Whereas for these kind of fast switching GAN devices, you will find actually the common mode noise starts appearing even in a very lower frequency range. If you want to find out more details about this subject, uh, I put one of my articles in the show notes so you can have a read, okay? 